The next topic is called series with positive terms. We saw in the last section how to determine the convergence or divergence of telescoping and geometric series. And what we did is we found the nth partial sum of the series and then we evaluated the limit as n approaches infinity. And we saw that if this limit approached a finite number, well then the series converged. And if the limit um, approached infinity, well then the series diverged. But more often than not, we're just not able to do this with most series. This is because we're not able to find an expression for the nth partial sum. And when this happens, what we do is we use tests for convergence or tests for divergence. And that's what this section will begin with. Let's begin by looking at the following theorem. So if our series converges, then the limit of the nth term a n as n approaches infinity is equal to zero. And this should be um, intuitive and obvious at this point. And a consequence of theorem three is the following theorem, which is the test for divergence. So if the limit of the nth term does not exist, or the limit of the nth term is not equal to zero, then the series diverges. We need to be careful with theorem 4. It's a test for diverge divergence, and it cannot tell us when a series converges. Okay? In other words, so theorem 4 does not say li um, if limit of a n as n approaches infinity is equal to 0, then the series converges. So now let me show you an example to better understand theorems 3 and 4. So let's consider the following example, which deals with harmonic series. And let me just begin by saying a few words about harmonic series. So they come from music. And in music, um, so you have instruments. And when um, you generate a, a musical note with an instrument, well, what you've got is the fundamental frequency of that note. So for instance, if you're playing an A note on a flute, well, you've got that A sounding. and um, the fundamental frequency is 440 hertz, but you also have all of the integer multiples of 440. So you've also got 880 hertz um, being generated and also 1320 hertz. And if we look at wavelengths, well, wavelength is 1 over frequency. So when you generate a musical note, the wavelengths um, can be represented by the series that we've got here. So the sum of 1 over n, n going from 1 to infinity, and n being the, the number of the harmonic. So you've got the first harmonic, which is the fundamental, and then the second harmonic, third harmonic, and so on. Let's begin by looking at what theorem 3 might be able to So we look at the limit of the nth term, a n, as n approaches infinity and this limit is equal to so the limit of 1 over n as n approaches infinity and we know that this limit is equal to 0 but theorem 3 does not guarantee us that the series now converges so all that we can say at this point is that the series may or may not converge now let's have a look at theorem 4 so theorem 4 says that if the limit as n approaches infinity of a n does not exist or is not equal to 0, then the series diverges. But in this case, the limit is equal to 0. Therefore, um, theorem 4 does not confirm to us that the series diverges. So all that theorem 4 can say is that the series may or may not converge. We're now going to analyze a few more um, series with um, theorem 4. Okay, so we're going to begin with part A. And in using theorem 4, we always find the limit of the nth term as n approaches infinity. Therefore, we have the following limit. So the limit as n approaches infinity of minus 1 to the power n minus 1. And this limit does not exist because minus 1 to the power of n minus 1 may be equal to 1 or minus 1 depending on the different values of n. Um, if n is even, 
Well, we get an odd number when we subtract 1 from it, and then we have minus 1 to an odd power, which is negative, and when n is odd, we have an even number here, and then we get an even number, um, or we get 1 when we have minus 1 to the power of an even number. Um, therefore, this limit does not exist. And therefore, following theorem 4, we can say that the series diverges. Now let's look at b. And once again, we find the limit of the nth term as n approaches infinity. And this limit gives infinity over infinity. Therefore, L'Hopital's rule applies. And we can um, continue by taking the derivative of the top over the derivative of the bottom, and it gives the following, which once again is equal to infinity over infinity. So we can apply L'Hopital's rule uh, for a second time. And we get the following, which is equal to 4 over 6 or 2 over 3. So in this case, all that we can say is that the series may or may not converge. Let's now continue by looking at um, number c. So once again, we find the limit of the nth term as n approaches infinity, which gives. And this limit is equal to minus infinity, because I've got minus 1.3 here, and n is going toward infinity. Therefore, I've got minus infinity. And theorem 4 tells us that the series diverges. And this confirms what we already knew about this series, because what we've got is a geometric series with r is equal to minus 1.3 and the absolute value of r, which is 1.3, is greater than 1. Therefore, the geometric series diverges. So what we've seen is that theorem 4 um, only allows to tell, uh, to tell us if a series diverges in some cases. And often, really, all we can say is that, it's, that the series may or may not converge. Um, the next test that we're going to see allows us to go quite a bit further. And when this test can be applied, it tells us if a series converges and if it also diverges. And let's look at it now. So it's called the integral test. And in this test, we define a function f. Now, f is equal to a index n, which is our nth term. And we need to suppose that f is a continuous positive and decreasing, decreasing function on the interval 1 to infinity. And, well, if the integral um, converges, so um, the improper integral going from 1 to infinity of f of x dx, if that integral converges, well then we can also say that the series converges. And we can also say that if the integral diverges, well then the series also diverges. And to understand the integral test, we look at the following graph. We firstly note that the rectangles under the curve are equal to the terms of the infinite series beginning at a2 and going all the way to a n. And we notice that these rectangles are always below the curve. Therefore, if the area under the curve converges to a finite value, well then the sum of all of the rectangles, which is the sum of all the terms of the series, will also converge. And if the sum of all of the rectangles converges, well then adding on the first rectangle, a1, um, will not change that the series converges. And this can be explained a little bit further with the following expression. So firstly, if the sum of the terms beginning at a2 going to an is less than or equal to the, um, the integral of f of x going from 1 to n, well then the nth partial sum beginning at a1 will be less than or equal to a1 plus the integral, the integral going from 1 to n of f of x dx. And all that we do now is make um, n go towards infinity, and what we say that um, if the integral converges, well then so does the infinite series. Now the integral test can also tell us um, when a series diverges, and to understand this, let's look at the following graph. So we firstly note that now um, it's the left end point of the rectangles that um, are touching the curve. And we see that these rectangles are always um, going past the curve. Therefore, if um, 
the area under the curve diverges, well then definitely the area of all of the rectangles will also diverge. And this can be explained a little bit further with the following expression. So um, if the integral diverges and this integral is less than um, the sum of the terms in our series, well then the series will definitely also diverge. Let's now use the integral test to analyze the harmonic series a bit further. So what can we now say about the harmonic series um, using the integral test? The first step is to define the function f of n, which is equal to the nth term a of n. So the function that we're going to consider for the integral test is the following. And we begin by making sure that f of x is continuous and decreasing on the interval 1 to infinity and this is definitely the case from what we know about uh, the 1 over x function and we also note that f of x is positive on the interval 1 to infinity therefore we can say and now we look at the improper integral and we check to see if this integral converges or diverges so let's evaluate the integral we begin by replacing infinity by a and introducing a limit and the antiderivative of 1 over x is equal to ln x therefore and ln 1 is equal to 0 therefore I'm left with the limit as a approaches infinity of ln absolute value of a and this limit is equal to infinity therefore given that the improper integral diverges, we can say that the series also diverges. So let's recall that theorem 3 and 4 said that the harmonic series may or may not converge, and now using the integral test we um, confirm that the harmonic series diverges.